hello guys welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that a 200 kg crate is to be supported by the rope and pulley arrangement determine the magnitude and direction of the force p that must be exerted on the free end of the rope to maintain equilibrium the hint is given that the tension in the rope is the same on each side of a simple pulley this can be proved by method of chapter 4 so now we have this pulley and a force P is required, uh, which is said that uh, we are required to determine this the magnitude of this force P and its direction alpha. And 200 kg crate is supported by this pulley. So now the weight of the crate will be 200 kg times 9.81. So we can say that, and, and, and if we draw the free body diagram, it will look like this. And the weight is going to act vertically downward. So this is that weight. And the weight is equals to 200 into 9.81 Newton. And similarly, this is that force P. This is that force P. And since this, this rope is continuous all around like this, so the tension in, in the rope will remain the same. So if we cut this rope, the, both of these ropes here, so here we the tension in this rope and the tension in this rope will remain the same and that the tension will be equal to that force p which is applied so we can say that that here we have that p and here as well and here as well now the the pulley is in equilibrium so the sum of all the forces in the x and the sum of all the forces in the y must be equal to zero since the resultant is equal to zero so we need to resolve these three p forces into their components and then we have to add up all the components so let's say if i add up all the components in the y direction so that must be equals to zero and upward direction is considered to be positive so now this p force will have two components this this one it will have one component in this direction and it will have one component in this direction so this component will be p sine of alpha and this is acting in the positive y direction so i will write plus p sine of alpha Similarly, the angle of both of these, the angle of these ropes is given in, in terms of these dimensions. So we can, we can construct a right angle triangle here. We can have a right angle triangle like this. So if we consider this right angle triangle and if we consider this angle, so then we will be able to find the angle of this P, both of these P forces with the vertical. So let me draw that small triangle here we will have the right angle triangle like this so this length is this vertical length is 2.4 so we can say that the base of this triangle is 2.4 so i will write that the base is 2.4 and the perpendicular is 0.75 so we can say that this is 0 0.75 so so we need to find the hypotenuse as well so by pythagoras theorem we can say that the hypotenuse will be 2.4 square plus 0 0.75 square under the square root so this is 2.4 square plus 0 0.75 square this gives me 2.514 or we can say that this is 2.51 2.51 so the hypotenuse of this triangle is 2.51 now we are going to consider the angle of both the ropes with the vertical since they are parallel so their angle will with, with the vertical will remain the same so let's say that the angle is somewhere here so then if we resolve these both of these p forces so we will have um, the one component of this p force like this this one will be if we are considering this angle let's say this angle is angle theta here we are considering this angle this angle and this angle so that is angle theta so then uh, this green component will be the cos component so we can say that this will be p cos of theta and similarly this p force will have that same component so that will be p cos of theta and both the components are acting in the upward direction so we can say that p cos of theta plus p cos of theta so that will become 2p cos of theta so i will multiply this with two since we have two components of same magnitude in the same direction so we can add up p cos of theta plus p cos of theta by head to tail root they will give us 2p cos of theta similarly uh, both of these uh, 
P forces or tensions will have oh, this P will have one component in this and similarly this P will have one component in this direction so that will become 2P sine of theta right so I we will write that this one will have like this and this one will have like this so that will be 2P sine of theta since since both the components this component has a magnitude of p sine of theta and this component has a magnitude of p sine of theta and they are acting in the same direction so we can aid them by heterotrade rule so p sine of theta plus p sine of theta will give us 2 p sine of theta so now this is very simple we are going to aid um, the components in the y direction so we have this um, this one is p cos of alpha and this one is p sine of alpha so we will have p sine of alpha in the positive y direction and then we have plus 2p cos of theta so plus 2p cos of theta minus the weight so weight is acting in the downward direction that is in the negative y direction so 200 into 9.81 and this is equal to 0 so now we can say that this is p we can take p common from both of these terms so we can say that this is p or uh, let's say let me write it like this this will be p sine of alpha plus 2p and now from this triangle cos of theta will be if we are considering this angle so cos of, cos of theta will be the base divided by hypotenuse so cos of theta will be 2.4 divided by hypotenuse which is 2.51 and the, we need to bring this weight to the other side so we will have 200 into 9.81 and as we can see that in this equation we have two unknowns the p magnitude is not known and in the angle alpha is not known as well so in this equation we have one equation we have two unknowns so let's simplify this equation first so we will have p sine of alpha plus we can simplify these constants so 2 times this divided by this so 2 times 2.4 divided by 2.51 this gives me 1.912 let me write it this is 1.912p equals to 200 into 9.81 so this gives me 1962 let's say this is equation 1 Similarly, if we add up all the components in the x direction, so the summation of forces along the x, that must be equal to 0. Towards the right is our positive x direction. So again, we have this p cos of alpha minus both of these, since they are acting in the negative x. So this is our positive x direction. So we can have p cos of alpha minus 2p sine of theta equals to 0. Now we can say that p cos of alpha minus 2p sine of theta from this triangle is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse so the perpendicular is 0 0.7 and the hypotenuse is this 2.51 meters and remember that this 2.5 uh, 1 meters uh, 2.51 is in meters right so the units are the, the same so this is 2p sine of theta sine of theta is the perpendicular divided by hypotenuse equals to zero so now again we can simplify this this will be p cos of alpha minus so 2 into 0 0.75 divided by 2.51 so this is 0 0.598 p equals to zero now if i divide this whole equation by p so we can divide this whole equation by p so that is p so p will cancel out everywhere and we will be left with cos of alpha minus 0 0.598 equals to 0 or we can say that cos of alpha is equal to 0 0.598 and alpha is equal to cos inverse 0 0.598 so cos inverse So this is equal to 53.27 degrees 
this is the direction of that force P which need to be applied and then we can substitute this alpha value in equation 1 in order to get, get the uh, P value so this is our equation 1 so equation 1 is P sine of this angle which is alpha 53.27 degrees plus 1.912 P equals to 1962 and similarly we can take uh, P common from both of these terms so we will have P sine of 53.27 plus 1.912 equals to 1962 so P will be equal to 1962 divided by So 1962 divided by sine of 53.23 so newtons. So if the magnitude of force P is 723.23 newtons and if it is acting at an angle of 53.27 degrees, so we will have this pulley in equilibrium so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from vector mechanics for engineers by baron johnston